When you injured your lower back, sometimes you might hear people say put heat pack, while other times you might hear people say put ice pack instead. While both therapy are beneficial, you might be like a lot of people not knowing when to put heat versus ice to maximize the benefit. If this is the question that you have, then search no further because in this video, I'm gonna share with you when to use heat and when to use ice for your lower back pain. Let's go! Hi, I'm Melanie the Physio, also the co-founder of Capital Physiotherapy here in Australia. Now in this channel, we have a whole playlist delegated for lower back pain. Now even though the title might not suit you right now, I still highly recommend you check them out because I'm sure there will be exercise or advice inside those videos that's going to benefit you right now. <laughs> Let's talk about ice pack first. When do you use ice therapy? Normally, I advise people to put ice in the acute phase of their injury. Now, acute phase of the injury means that um, you just injured it not long ago. Like you just wake up in the morning and you have this massive back pain that you couldn't get out of bed, you can bend forward, you can't do anything. That's what we call an acute injury where it literally happened not long ago. Or if you have a sudden high impact, on that area or if you injured it during sports if, if you have a sudden sharp pain if you sprain your lower back just recently those are the time that we generally recommend ice instead of heat therapy while i'm doing this video i am very acutely aware that there is this controversial behind icing uh, a, a affected area because there is a lot of article out there that's telling people to stop icing it because ice reduces inflammation and inflammation is needed to help you heal. Now that is correct. Inflammation, you do need inflammation to help you heal because without inflammation, that area wouldn't heal. So people would say that, so if you ice it, it reduces inflammation, it slows down your healing. But let me tell you this, from my 10 years of experience working in clinic and dealing with many, many, many injured people, especially injured people with lower back, ice do help during the acute phase. Now, although ice reduce the inflammation, same as anti-inflammatory drugs reduce the inflammation, but I think people need to start seeing signs as not a concrete yes or no answer. Just because you found some information online or follow some um, Instagram person or social media influencer and they tell you not to do certain things, you have to realize that science, there is no a definite yes or a definite no. There is always articles that says both sides and some people are more biased to one side while others are biased to the other side. So you just need to keep that open-mindedness when you're reading anything related to health or anything related to science for that matter. And it is not a one-way street and I think the quicker people realize this concept, the better it is that they will do good for their own injuries. And yes, that is correct. Inflammation is absolutely crucial for healing. That's why some part of your body, like our knee meniscus, sometimes when people torn it in an area where there is just no blood supply, there will be no inflammation happening because there's no blood going to that area. And when there's no blood, no inflammation, that area would never heal. So yes, inflammation is important for healing process. However, when you're in an acute phase of an injury, there is too much inflammation. Yeah, and that's why you have this reactive reaction from your body of this, like say for example, if you sprain your ankle, this massive swelling, this massive pain, that massive spasming, that is all caused by inflammation too, or the reaction of having too much inflammation. You need inflammation to help you heal. You just need, you just don't need too much of them. That's why during your acute phase of your lower back that you will find anti-inflammatory drugs help, you will find that ice help because that will calm down the swelling, calm down the inflammation so they're not uh, excessively having too much of it and that in turn will then help you with uh, your pain and when you have less pain, you would have better movement. 
and lotion is lotion. So movement is always good for you no matter what phase you're in. Therefore, if you're in acute pain and if you put heat instead, which stimulate a lot of blood circulation to that area when that area is already having too much swelling, too much muscle spasming, too much um, inflammation, it's going to pump up that blood circulation and pump up that inflammation instead, and pump up the swelling. And even though while the heat pack is on your muscle, it will relax the muscle spasming. After you take the heat pack off because there's more blood going there, there's more swelling, it goes back to that excessive inflammation mode and it becomes a vicious cycle. And after a while, you'll feel more pain when you're in the acute phase and you're doing a lot of heat therapy. Hence, when people come into my clinic and have very, very severe acute pain where they're barely can move their back at all. I always encourage ice and anti-inflammatory for the, at least the next few days. And these ice therapy or ice pack will help soothe the muscles, reduce any localized inflammation and minimize pain. And by the time the client come back to me next time after doing ice a lot, after taking anti-inflammatory a lot, you will see that their pain and that just the facial expression will be so much better that they're not grimacing in pain and their movement is also so a lot better than when I first see them. Now, mind you, today the topic we are talking about is specifically for injury, any kind of injury. Now, we're not talking about delay muscle onsets, pain from just working out too much, this is not the video for it. I'll bet with delay muscle onsets, there will be heat and eye therapy as well, which is good for you. And that's a whole different topic. If you like me to talk more about delay muscle onset pain, let me know down in the comment down below and we will make a video specifically for that. So ice, we use it for um, acute phases. So what about heat pack? When do we use heat pack then? Heat pack, I generally recommend people who is in the subacute phase or the chronic phase. Subacute means that um, you are past the super painful phase of your lower back pain. I'll bet it's still quite uncomfortable and it's still painful a lot of the time, but it's not like massive spasming that you literally just can't even move your back. Those phases are what we call subacute and chronic lower back pain is basically lower back pain that you have for many, many months, many, many years, and uh, it's been an ongoing thing for a while. It's not a sudden pain. It's not an acute episode of your lower back pain. It's just your daily discomfort. Those are the time I would encourage people to use heat pack instead. Now heat will improve your blood circulation to the affected area and help facilitate healing because it promotes inflammation. It may also decrease the stiffness and prevent pain signal from traveling up to your brain during the subacute and chronic phases. However, if you have open wound, if you have skin condition, if you have diabetes where your sensation is a little bit off, then do not put ice or heat or anything over it for that matter. Now heat pack may help warm up the muscles and therefore reduce and relieve the muscle spasming and increase the mobility of that joint at that area once you put the heat therapy on. Now, although both ice and heat therapy have their own benefits and can help improve your symptom, they are not a long-term solution for any injury or for your lower back pain. They are normally put in conjunction with other rehab exercise, whether that's stretches or whether that's strengthening. We normally give ice or heat together with those rehab exercise. We don't just give people specific specifically heat and ice, and then assume that that alone is good enough to help heal the problem because it would not be good enough. Like I said, the most important thing is movement, movement, movement. The more you move, the stronger you are, the better it is for your back. Whichever phases you're in for your lower back pain, as a physiotherapist, when I see you and when I assess you, I recommend you different therapy, whether it's ice or heat, but all these time, I'll always keep in mind that the most important thing is which therapy should I give, whether it's ice or heat, that will help improve the movement of this particular person. And whichever I think is the most suitable is the one that I'll advise them at that moment in time. 
So the main goal is always using heat or ice as a helping tool for my clients to allow them to be able to move better and continue with their rehab exercise sooner to fix their lower back pain for the long run. If you would like to learn more about lower back pain, head on to our private Facebook page at Ask Mel the Physio. In there, you would have access to all the free PDF that we have on all body parts up till this far. And not only that, you will also have all the other free educational booklet that we will be uploading from now onwards. I upload video here on a weekly basis on health and fitness related topic. Now, if you're suffering from acute lower back pain right now and you don't know what to do, make sure you head on to that video right there, up there, that's gonna help you. And if you're suffering from lower back pain for a long time now make sure you check out this video down here and both of them is going to be beneficial for you right now good luck with your lower back pain and i will see you in the next video until then stay safe happy and healthy see ya